It's February 14th, as the singing zoologist, lover of creatures of every size, shape, color, and phylum, I would like to extend a big happy Valentine's Day to animals everywhere. I wish you good luck in finding your dream boat, or dream goat in that guy's case. To Mr. Moose, keep grazing on that grass, grow a magnificent set of antlers, and may they do for you what Robert Pattinson's hair has done for him. To Mr. Peacock, keep on strutting your stuff. Sooner or later, that little lady's bound to notice you. And to prairie chickens everywhere, keep on blowing up those balloony things. They drive those hens wild. And finally, to my froggy friends, keep on singing. Yes, humans, that's singing that they do. At least, that's what the boy frogs do. Girl frogs can't sing, not even if they want to. But don't feel all bad for the girl frogs. <gasps> and boys, don't be all high and mighty. Yeah, that's right, uh-huh. Because you know that the boy frogs are only singing to impress the girl frogs. That's right, that's how it works. Scientists call their songs advertisement calls, and if you could put on some kind of like frog language decoding ears or something and understand what those boy frogs were saying, they'd be going, hey, good looking, mm hmm. I'm available, yeah, and I'm a hunk of hunk of burning frog, baby, yeah. And the girl frogs, they hear the boy frogs, they be going, Oh, he sounds so cute. I'm gonna go hop off and find him. And off she goes, following that sound, tracking him down, kind of like when you're playing Marco Polo in the pool. Because she can hear him, but she probably cannot see him, because frogs are small and usually well camouflaged. But she can hear that call and she uses it to track him down. That's why every frog has its own call. That's right, not all frogs go. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Have you ever heard that sound before? Mm hmm. Yeah, you know where you've probably heard it? On TV. Unless you live out on the Pacific coast of the USA, that's the call of the Pacific Chorus Frog. It's really the only frog that sounds like ribbit. So whenever they show a frog on TV, they're going to play that sound. But if you live in some other part of the country like me, you really don't hear any frogs going ribbit. They make all kinds of sounds. If they all went ribbit, they'd get all mixed up. You could have four or five different kinds of frogs or more singing around a single pond one night. How can they tell which one to track down? They've each got their own call. If they all went ribbit, you get the little bitty frogs like a spring peeper. That little thing is about as long as the tip of your thumb. About an inch to an inch and a half long. Yeah. She'd hear that sound, and if that's the only sound that frogs make, she'd have to hop off. Boing, 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 boing. And she'd spend a lot of time and energy looking for that boy frog. Yoo-hoo, where did you go? And when she finally found him, she might be like, Ew, you're a big old bullfrog. Get your big old green self out of here. Come back. Yeah, so every kind of frog has its own call. The spring peeper calls out, looks like that. He blows up that big balloony thing to make his voice a lot louder, and they make quite a racket early in the springtime. Sounds like this. Yeah, that doesn't sound anything like ribbit to me. The bullfrog is much bigger. Got a lower sound. <laughs> that sounds kind of like a moose that's had too much cafeteria food or something. Now the coastal plain toad is one that you hear a lot in my neck of the woods. They're all over eastern, the eastern half of Texas, and they make a sound kind of like a UFO's landing in the backyard. The American toad sounds a lot like that too. 
the cricket frog, it sounds like somebody's clacking a couple of rocks together. You'll hear that song a lot in the summertime, but most people think it's a bug. It's not. That's a frog. Now the green frog sounds like somebody's snapping a rubber band. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> the pig frog sounds like a pig. And finally, my favorite frog, the Easter narrow mouth toad. Nothing's going to lull you off to sleep to dreamland quite like the lovely call of the Easter narrow mouth toad. That sounds like a bunch of babies that all want their diaper changed right now! Now, if you love frogs as much as I love frogs, head out to the nearest pond or stream sometime this summer and take a little seat, wait for a few minutes, and see what you hear. You can actually go on a frog watch, and it'll help scientists monitor the populations of frogs around the country. It's a great way to help out. You can also read The Frogs and Toads of North America by the amazing Lang Elliott, who recorded these songs that you've been hearing. This book's got pictures and a recording of every kind of frog that is found in the USA. And you will be a frog expert if you grab this book. I hope you enjoyed my little talk here. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there, especially the frogs. Yeah.